And hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the stream. It's your host, Marley Startled, and today we're going to be continuing on our Grand Tactician campaign. Um, so far, I think we're going rather well, uh, but I don't want to go into too much detail yet until I've shown you what's going on next. I don't know we'll have, if we'll have enough time for, uh, for the strategic recap before we get to the next battle, but uh, all together, it's a very interesting uh, advance, although I have been curb stomping the Confederacy. I mean, Union is quite uh, quite easy um, compared to the Confederacy. Um, it looks like the tables are turning and the Confederacy is slowly getting their act together. It'll be whether or not they uh, come back from losing Richmond, which I think they may be able to do if they're uh, clever about it. And get to enjoy the lovely uh, imagery of, uh, of the Civil War. <laughs> the music does not really fit very well with the horrors of the, of the Confederates uh, of, the, uh, of the battle. So let's do a little strategic recap before the battle starts. So where were we? The key uh, Union, oh, we have advanced down to take Richmond with the Army of Northeastern Virginia. And we've also moved down with the Palmer of Pennsylvania. We did attempt to take Lynchburg, but our troops are getting too war weary from the advance. And so we've had to stay put probably for the start of the rest of this year until the end of the campaigning season. Um, and meanwhile, the Confederacy has now got a fairly large force of about 30,000 men, or about 60,000 men ready to advance to retake Richmond. And over on the central Kentucky, we are moving down with the Army of Indiana to... Am I moving down with the Army of Indiana? Could be. Where's the rest of that army? Where's the rest of the Army of Indiana? Army of Indiana, 1st Corps. 29 guns, 1st Corps. That's not a very big army. Oh, it is a big army. Yeah, there it is. There's the first corps of the army in Vienna. They're moving down to clear out the remnants of the uh, battered Confederate corps that had been destroyed by McClellan's nuking of Tennessee. Uh, meanwhile, McClellan is s set up in Decatur and are gonna, is going to begin advancing after being resupplied back up to uh, Chattanooga, where he will continue on his uh, raiding and just general butchery um the confederacy have attempted to attack this but as we found out the uh the raid mechanic is perhaps a little bit too strong right now and all these uh confederate troops have been battered so it has been a pretty mobile war in tennessee uh and we are slowly going to move down to chattanooga to eventually try and uh, do a raiding of atlanta i mean on the west our western advance has, has sort of stalled and we have been pushed back from our advance to Arkansas. So we had moved down to, uh, to Fort Smith. But we've had to withdraw to Carlington AR. And now we've had to set up around Fort, Fort Rugal. So this is because of war weariness which is set in from, for the Union. Uh, and from the constant campaigning which has just ruined. Well that's made it very difficult for us to continue our advance. So in consequence we are aiming to pacify Missouri by moving up the first corps to secure the north and eventually after these guys have sort of got to act together to move down south uh, again into Arkansas. Strategy here again is to move down to Chattanooga and on the east with McDowell we're going to try and hold Richmond so this will be a holding action in Richmond while whereas we continue the rather mobile campaign in the center and uh, war pacification in Missouri. In terms of strategy, as you can see, our national morale is 87 and our loyal states are 29. They've got a national morale of 40 because of the excessive victories we've, we've done and the damage we've done by taking Richmond. Uh, and their casualties are much greater. I've got about 31,000. They've got almost 138,000, mostly due to the raiding mechanic. Um, we are also going down like, policies-wise to emancipation. We sort of need emancipation to... Um, get our war support back up so this will increase the uh, south by plus five in terms of our state support but it will increase our support by plus five as well and our confiscation act will also apply as well in 
terms of manpower, pretty even Stevens. And in terms of finances, yeah, it's going pretty well. Recruitment, everything is going pretty well finance-wise. I'm going to start upping everything, industry, even diplomacy. Because our wickedness print money, money printer goes through it. So we should be immediately going into a battle in a second. If I go to click this assault button. And it's around about 60,000 each way, I believe. You're facing the army of Florida with only 6,000 men and 18 guns. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe I should uh, go back out of that save. Uh, let's take a look. Is the Confederate getting reinforcements? Yes, they are. The army of Florida, which is about 6,000 men, I believe. And then we have the Fort Brancas and the Florida State Militia. So the cafe's got 8,000 right now. Yeah, we may have to go back out because we're going to crush this. Uh, I don't think I have... I think the save, again, I think saving before battles has got been, uh, causes the game to bug out, which is a bit of a nuisance. So we'll try again. Oh no. Okay, exit to menu. Twenty sixth of July. Yeah, that's it. It's already off to a bad start, boys. That's an interesting mechanic. The fact that if you're if you're in friendly territory or home territory, your troops morale will be stronger. Okay, so here we are back again on campaign map. Let's see if I can get this into a fight. There we are. There we are. That's what we needed. So, low morale, two brigades, meaning that a total of five thousand men will not be joining the battle. I've got. 60,000 men and 80 cannons, they've got 170 cannons, 75 or 80,000 men. There will be an interesting battle, but we'll be playing on the defence. So it'll be the first time when the Confederate has brought really a significantly large force to bear. And objective-wise, where's the enemy? Ob where's our friendly objectives? Uh, that's not it. There it is. We've got Poly Hole Corner and Gaines Mill. So we have not got Gaines Mill, but we have got Poly Hole Corner, which is giving me five capture points. Where the Gaines Mill is also getting ten capture points. So we will have to go on the offensive here, which is not good. RNG has already bummed us in an unfortunate situation. Fortunately, I don't believe the entire Confederate force will be moving in yet. So, fingers crossed, if I take a look and see if we've got the Confederates, uh, we've got Hampton Division and the Army of Shenandoah. Uh, it won't tell me, that's a shame. 
Reviving and zero. Oh, right, they're both coming together. That's going to be a problem for me. I have a big problem. I'm just going to hope that these troops are good enough. To achieve victory. We may have to move our reinforcing army or our, fl our army on the west on the campaign to move to support the northeastern army. So we will have to move down to Gaines Mill. But my main effort here will be to send two cores down to secure the river crossing. And then over here, send the rest of the army to move down to Gaines Mill. And that should hopefully stop the uh, Confederate reinforcements moving up. And then maybe we can fight a pitched battle on even footing. Fingers crossed, eh? Those will find out. Okay, Tom, the army of Shenandoah has finally arrived. This is not good. Meanwhile, these guys will take a while to move. But the missions are finally getting into position, so... As long as we can secure that crossing, we'll be fine. And then I can just f f defeat the enemy in detail. It irritated that they've got new Cold Heart Harbour, but uh, that's, that's the way it goes sometimes. This means I've got to play the game a bit differently, um, which is quite good sometimes. I like the fact that sometimes you can't just play defensively. You've got to be aggressive even when it's not in your favour. That's why I do like the point system a great deal. The point system, indeed. So far, so good. It looks like we will be moving now to secure this river crossing before the Confederacy have a time to uh, to, to to cross. Now I'm going to send two cores over to the Chickahominy River bridge crossing there as well. In the meantime, start building fortifications. Troops have almost formed up. Tempted to move the cavalry already up to uh, Gaines Mill.
Oh god, we have thunder outside. I wonder if you guys will pick it up. Oh, we will find out. All right, let's move into Gaines Mill. Let's form that battle line. See the Confederates moving up from the south. All right, I need to slow the game down a little bit. Move the artillery forward if you can. There's the artillery, it's taking its sweet time, that's where it is. I'm going to move in immediately with William H. Davis to knock out the artillery piece. Nice unsupported artillery piece. That's happened a lot. Because of the way the AI forms up. Quite good on the, on the defensive though, this uh, supporting artillery with divisions. So what they'll do is they'll do like four infantry, one supporting artillery. They'll very rarely just have one pure artillery battery. Yeah, we get that guy back. And move forward cavalry if possible. We're very uh, up in the air right now. Early engagements always are. But the trick here is I want to sort of capitalize on the chaos right now. We've already sort of spread out artillery pieces. Uh, halt the advance. Get up there. Sadly, a lot of our divisions are all over the place right now. I don't think they're going to be crossing here anymore, so I'm going to start relocating this division over here. I'm going to take a risk and abandon the river crossings. Everyone fought long range. And move in to engage this artillery piece. I'm going to see if I can... I've, I've sort of formed a conducive battle line here, but uh, it's still much to be desired. And the cavalry won't move.
Mm, so the first brigade is uh, playing up. Mixed muskets, not a good, uh, not a good thing. A lot of moving troops, a lot of Confederate troops moving along the line. So the cannons are taking out our biggest stretch off our battle line. And now battle is joined over Gaines Mill. I need you to start turning this way, old boy. There we are. Now you're cooking with fat. You, on the other hand, still refuse to turn. He's a the team now. Relocate the cavalry on the right, they can do a flanking action. Sadly, most of it is mixed muskets, so uh, actually, it's probably not a good idea to do that. Cavalry just there to hold. Whoa, 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 whoa. What on earth are you doing, Sydney? Sydney Barnes has marched down the center. Artillery. I need that charged up right now. Yeah, Sydney Barnes is a uh, quarter a disaster there. May have to replace him. I have no idea what possessed him to do that. However, the right flank has been contained. We're doing rather well here. Very bad decision by Sydney. Now Sydney Barnes has decided to try and form up in front of the Confederate lines. What sort of man is Sydney, eh? Inexperienced, liked, cautious, and he's got legendary fame, but uh, he's a bit predictable. I begin to move up to engage this lone Confederate force. Hans is routed. I'm ordering a steady withdrawal back until the rest of my corps can reinforce. No need to do a decisive battle with only half my army here. And the cannons are almost in their destination. Oh wait, I got confused. Sorry, Barnes was on top of my, uh, was on top of Walker. But still, the same logic applies. There's no point throwing my, uh, throwing my hand in right now. Yeah. 
yeah, David Hunter has yet to have an impact on the battle, but one, I'm a bit concerned right now because they've got a larger force that's just very chaotic on their side. So if they were to organise it, we would begin to have problems. So once I've got my reinforcing cores in, we should be okay. Or divisions. Be worse. Could be worse. The cannons are finally here, so uh You should be able to stabilize the fourteen pounder James Cannon. I'm gonna turn this on turbo mode, give me a sec boys. Uh a bit slow. I think the latest patch may have uh, increased performance a little bit. as a point-blank volley waiting to happen. Charge. Uh, also, you've been able to push them back. This has worked. One thing I've learned from uh, the American Civil War is frontal charges are not the smartest thing to do. Strategically right now, the centre is still a bit delicate. If we can secure the right and destroy these two cores, I can bring this division around to start flanking act action. Which should put pressure on the Confederate troops. Right now, and plus I'm not... We're nowhere near the end of the day yet, so it's going to be a bit of a problem there as well. Sometimes the end of the day can save you. It's okay though boys, the cannons are inbound. that should secure the centre. A lot of enemy calls are drawing, which is good. That is bad. The first brigade is just routed because of that cannon. And now that cannon's thinking about routing as well, so. If I can bring this cannon down on this hill. Yeah, that's what we need. Give me a volley. Now I'll push back uh, Lawton's advance. They decide to fire.
mixed muckers. So I don't envy these guys in the slightest. I'm going to almost reload it. Can you give me that sweet volley? There we are. In comes the cannon, just knocking these soldiers down. Oh, hello, Hoffman. Welcome back. Just watching uh, Roman B. Ayer's 10 pound of parrot knocking down Lawson's brigade. I'm going to start moving. There's a lot of chaos with my cores over here right now. They keep on changing around the orders, which is really problematic. Uh, yes, we've taken Richmond now. We're just trying to hold it from the uh, against the Confederate counterattack. Which uh, is not going too badly. Like, we re we're uh, doing all right. We've more or less solidified our hot grasp of the right flank. Now we're just moving in to reinforce the left. And plus with the reinforcing cannons. It should be a pretty uh, pretty easy victory right now. See it's a minor victory. Could be the Confederates beginning to withdraw soon. Yeah, it's starting to see a withdrawal now. Interesting AI logic here. But then again, they're not throwing all their troops away in a pointless assault. I don't think my soldiers are in any state to advance, so there's too many, uh, I think they're too war weary right now. Yeah, the enemy's retreating back. A rather non-committal engagement, uh, it was more or less a probing attack by the Confederates. Um, probably next time, if they reinforce all en masse, they may uh, be able to organise a much more effective attack. But um, this is a stem trying to cross, and uh, a mild... Uh, a mild engagement, not the large scale battle world that I was expecting. Let's take a look at the casualties. Five thousand Union, nine thousand Confederacy, interesting. Yeah, a very limited engagement. But a, actually a rather tight engagement now. I must admit, very tight, you know, first time I've had really on comparable casualties with the, Confed with the Confederates. Still, now I need to upgrade their equipment. I've been ignoring the plight of the Union soldier for too long. I'll have a minor scuffle. So first thing first, let's upgrade the equipment for these guys. If possible, we can't. We've ran out of equipment to upgrade. Not good. Sadly, we can't chase them. Well, our morale is too low. Once we get hit the Emancipation Proclamation and Confiscation, then I reckon we'll be uh, okay. But for now, we're uh, in a bad spot.
How? So your condition is good. What about your army? Like, is your troops okay? Are they happy? I don't know. We're going to try another advance down into Lynchburg. And see what happens. I'm going to save it as well, just in case. Meanwhile, first cause moving in to clear out the Kentucky, uh, well, the Tennessean forces. And my raiders are going to move north now to uh, Pesta to move up to um, Chattanooga. Look at that, the damage they're getting from, from raiding, it's disgusting. 2,000 casualties, one tick. They've gone down to 3,000 men. Raiding is OP. Raiding is OP. But this playthrough, we're going to allow raiding. Because <laughs> by this stage, the damage is already done. Take Chattanooga and build me a supply depot. These armies can just really push out the Confederate troops just lounging around in my territory, being a general nuisance. And I'm going to send up the Department of the West up north. And maybe push out the Army of Tennessee. I don't really want to. I want to keep it there, but I'm sick and tired of that army behind me being a nuisance. Then immediately switch to raiding and watch the world burn. We can actually get a victory this time around if we're... Uh, if I'm honest, raiding, if I'm honest. These Confederate armies just constantly moving around. My rear lines is disgusting. I wonder where they're going. You better be going a long way back down over here. Okay, is that the north secure? Almost, I've just got to take Petersburg. Getting downright irritated by their constant, uh, constant maneuver, like the constant bush wars of these small armies. Gotta win that siege, boy. Gotta win that siege. So you can get that resupply. Come on, give me that resupply. Give me that resupply. There we are.
And let's fill this with some men, Fort Stoneman Garrison. I'm going to move this army eastwards to be in front of that, uh, that fort. In fact, I may even engage. I'm going to engage. Okay. So, Rice's Corps of the Army of Georgia is in contact with the Army of Pennsylvania. What are your orders? Yeah, it looks like the uh, Confederates are moving up on massive reinforcements now. So, we've got 30,000 troops there. That's only one soldier, don't worry about that. 37 moving in. 25 moving in. It's almost 100,000 men. But we are getting close to victory because of state support, which I think is because of the OP-ness of the raid mechanic. However, well, that just gives me ample time to move to the Confederacy to play that instead. And meanwhile over here the Army of the West is of course exploiting my advance up here to um, secure St. Saint, uh, Saint Joseph's Town. So I'm going to have to move this force back down south to clear out Missouri because of the Army of the West being a nuisance. This apparently has 80,000 men but I suppose we'll find out. Really, if Missouri flips the wrong way, you're going to have a really bad time as a Union because Missouri is a, a hell of a place to fight in. You won't be able to move south from Missouri. In fact, I'm even tempted just to abandon the Western Theatre and just hold it and so I can focus on the centre. So what have we got objective-wise? Have I got... Okay, I've got this hill, this, this, this. So I have all the objectives, so I can play defensive. The enemy is advancing from W.J. Patterson, and the main road stretches all the way down into the Apotomax. <laughs> Apotomax, oh boys. Historical battle incoming. Maybe the battle of the size of war. So I think if I set up a long defensive line here, in the open, maybe even to probably behind that hill, like along this ridge line, like so. I can let the AI come to me and engage me in a uh, pitched battle. It's just about a case of how to build my battle lines. So I would like a core here, but I know the main road is there. So I'd like a core on the other side as well. Their divisions, but I treat them like cores. Okay, there we go. So we're going to have a core here, a core there. I'm going to stretch all the way over this ridge line like so. Have these guys got good equipment? No, of course not. My cavalry's garbage. Bruh. Well, the plans to put the cannons sort of up here like this. And I'm going to move my troops a bit further down the hill. And they should just have pure oversight of the battle. Defense wise, we can dig in all day. Let's go for vest works. Actually, let's go big. Go big or go home. Whoa, that's not what I wanted. I want parapets. P -p 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 parapets. That's just that's the stuff. And then to stop it bugging out, there you go.
Yeah, I want it a bit bigger, if I'm honest. A bit more. Come on, a bit more. Lovely stuff. That is a lovely defensive line. Uh, this Cav can just stay on the right. Can just be a general nuisance on the right flank. And I think we can finish off some best works here. Can't, there's a bloody... There's a fence in the way. I know what about us have to do. Get all my soldiers to fire at long range. And begin the engagement. So I'm going to immediately move up onto the right. Like so. And the cavalry can move even further over here. Though I could use them as a reserve force. I use them as a reserve force because otherwise the line's going to get too long. First defensive, well, first proper defensive battle with uh, trenches. This should allow me to move the cannons up. Hopefully onto the top of this hill. Yeah, I should have more capture points. So that should force the AI into action. But who knows? Who knows? Let's take a look. Taken, taken by person, occupied, 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 occupied. Yeah, we've got... Yeah. We have the strategic ground. They have to come for us. Start building defences on the right. To speak, this is going to be basic best works. And put the cannons right on the road, so if they come down, they're going to get peppered. So there's only one way where this could go wrong, and that is if they decide to march down along this side road and just turn the flank. Yes, over Anakin. I have the highest count. Exactly, exactly. That's the only way it can go wrong. If they advance down this way, they'll move into my field of death. It's over Anna Lee. Yeah, I have the high ground. Exactly, exactly. Obi Wan, Link Obi Lincoln, you, under you underestimate the OPness of the raid mechanic. Yeah, look, look at that. I'm a strategic genius. Already, we've had a, a wide advance. They've moved into contact. They are going to advance straight into the Valley of Death. So we immediately start relocating the cannons.
But the question is, will they take the bait? I'm going to send the cow on the far left as well. I know you said far right, but now we've seen some initial contact. Okay, what's the plan here, Confederates? The first scouting corps and uh, Davidson moving in. Davidson's all by himself. What's the plan here, Davidson? Davidson's formed up. How many million? About 200, I think. About 200 million. Davidson's yeeting forward. Oh, wait, no, here's the order. Here's the order from the messenger, like, no, run away, don't do this. What are you doing, Davidson? Retreat now. The commander demands it. Davidson doesn't care. What's he doing? Oh, another order coming in. Retreat now, Davidson. Union, fire at long range. Knock him out. Where's the messengers coming out? Where's the messengers? No, Davidson, no! Yeah, he does not give any... He does. He gives no shit. No, oh, now, now he does. Now he does. Like, ah. I've, now I've made you march into a uh, killing range. So he's going to stand... Uh, he's just standing exactly out of firing range. I don't think this is going to work out for you, old boy. You know what, Davis is moving on again. McCook can watch his brigade get slaughtered. Make sure that audio is good for you boys. I want you, I want you to hear the gunshots. There we go. Silky Smooth 37. <laughs> yeah, like the, yeah, exactly. Like the carry off on Adel. McCook's just like, yeah, I'm getting out of here. What a slaughter. What a waste of a, a good brigade. Jackson, the cork, uh, is he the cork commander or the, salt or the uh, commanding officer? Take a look. Confederacy. Jackson's core. Oh, he's a core commander. All right, Jackson's come out the scene. He's like, what's going on here? What are you doing, Davidson? I'm holding the line. I hope so, Dool. I hope so. 
for your sake. Uh, interesting. They're just marching straight down the road. All sent. <laughs> I'm going to send you back to the uh, to go to the staff office back in Washington. Have a cushy, uh, cushy career. So, I think here's where the AI maybe falls down a little bit. Is that it just doesn't react as fast as a player. So, imagine it from the player's perspective. You're marching down and you see this. You immediately click spacebar. You halt and then you start microing out orders. There's for the AI, it stops and there's a big old pause while it tries to like assess the situation, and then it uh, then it will start moving and uh, arranging it, giving you plenty of time to react to it. In this case, uh, the twelve pound Napoleons make short work of this. I'm going to send a uh, artillery piece down to this main road. So right now, I think the AI is trying to work out, all right, here's a big lot wall of death. What do I do here? It sees an opening there. It's moving up. It's like, oh, this is probably not a good place to advance. And the big question is, where is the rest of the army? So it may start manoeuvring, but I doubt it. I suspect it will try and form a nice decisive point where it thinks the line is weak, which I think is going to be here. I think they're going to try and yeet down this road, and it's just not going to work out well for them. I can wait here all day. Yeah, I'm going to see where they concentrate, and then if they concentrate all over here, I'm just going to flank round. Again, this is a pull no punches uh, playthrough. Is that other cannon going to move over? It doesn't look like it. Send one cav brigade on the Patterson point. Ah, oh, okay. Aye, aye, Captain. Alright, Morgan's off of his Springfield Musketoons. Looks like that this place is a little buggy. Come on. Come on, there we are. It's gonna take a while for the order to get to him. There we are, he's on his way. I'm more than happy for them to stay there. I can just keep hitting them with artillery. Alright. Morgan. Start moving up a bit more. I want to know where they're coming from. Ah, okay.
Now, here's the thing. If I was much more aggressive, I could just wipe this out in detail. Oh, God has arrived. Ah, I see. More recruits with more meat for the meat grinder. Jackson's call is only 3,700 men for old Jackson. I suspect that was uh, Davidson. Now all these guys are feuding, rioting because their commander doesn't do anything. And that's Beauregard's core moving up. But by the end of the day soon. Still, I, don't, I think I've inflicted a hefty, uh, hefty amount of casualties on these guys from the uh, engagement. Oh, that's, from the, that's from the battery fire. Fortunately for me, this force is taking a very long time to get anywhere. Okay, Cook, what's the plan? You're gonna just march into my gunfire. Looks like it. Cook's about to get smashed. Oh dear, Cook. Why do you go and do a silly thing like that? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Was this a nighttime offensive? I'm not moving out of Louis. Hamilton's brigade can just uh, get mowed down by the 12 pounders. Cease partial logic here. Like, here's the weak point, let's charge through it. But he should have waited until the, until the rest of the reinforcing army was here before it, they did an assault. And really, they should have probably retreated this core back out of the cannon fire. Because they'd have been sat there all day getting bombarded by cannons.
people have had they've received new orders. What will be these new orders? Withdrawal, I suspect. Five hundred casualties in the space of less than an hour. Massive disaster of an assault. Meanwhile, on the right, however. We're going to attack off this point. I feel a strong exploit, indeed. It looks like I can. It looks like you can potentially bait the AI into suicidal rushes if we just build a strong defensive line with a purposeful hole in the center, like and filled with cannons, and the AI will just charge through it. Potentially, of course, it has to be tested. But I don't want to test the game to break it. You need to charge this. Gordon has to charge to get rid of that cannon. Alright, so we've lost two brigades already. Two brigades on the right, just to one cannon piece. Cannons are so volatile. I'm going to retreat back to the, uh, the cavalry to reinforce the right. That are so deadly cannons. Looks like some of my troops have grown a spine again. You can also exploit a little bit here. So for example, I can just dump my infantry point blank like that and just delete the enemy cannon like so. But that's not very fair, so we're not going to do that. That is wrong. It's bad. You should feel bad if you do that. I can't build there. Fair one. Do it. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll feel guilty about it after. How did the uh, Union teleport? I don't know. I'm using new technology. And I want to bring the cavalry back as well. Can I get you back over here? Yeah. So if this fails, at least I've got a cavalry to reinforce on the right. Oh, one of my cannons is feeling a bit, feeling a bit poorly. No worries, we can watch it. Now this is what happens when you cheese the game. Feel bad now. Probably should have reloaded before the start of the battle. If I'm honest. Maybe a good idea to reload before the start of the battle. I should just charge this. Charge! Oh, a daytime assault on the centre. Not going to work, I don't think. Okay. 
few attempts at Millie. I think we'll be alright. I think we'll win this. Who's in charge of this pack then? What's the lesson here, boys? Frontal charges are not a good idea. And now we're out in the open on the right, but hey-ho. We've got the reserve cab in case we do get pushed back. Oh, someone's house got blown up. A lot of piecemeal assaults from the uh, Confederacy. Sometimes the yeah, eyes just be like that, you know. Sometimes be 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 like that. They do. At this stage, we've we've got the numbers game. They're all they're all routing. And because we're Cheeky boys. The cow are going to do their yeeting soon. Operation Yeet. So, Jenkins Brigade, who's going to win? One confetti boy. Or four brigades worth of cavalry charge. Alright, two brigades because the other cavalry's not moving and that's retreating. Stop retreating. Charge. Move forward, please. All right, two two cowboys one. Where are you running, eh? Nope, 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 nope. Get him, get him. Don't let him run. Come on, Morgan, stop feuding. Come on, Wall. Wall's a pain in the ass. Keep... Stop feuding with your superiors, they're giving you victory. go. Retreat back. We've done our job. Are they going to try again? I doubt it. I think they're going for the withdrawal stage. This cavalry is so painfully unresponsive, I may have to do some changing in commanders. I always say that, but I never bother. So the first core has been battered into, into <laughs> defeat. Now we're moving on to the second core. So one of my artillery batteries got beaten to death. This is just an open field of slaughter. This is uh, not good. 
not good for defenders. I don't. It's quite. It's very difficult for them to win on this uh, on this battlefield. Really, once they committed forces there, it was pretty much over. There's no way they can break now. Again, if we want to feel particularly abusive for the AI. Charge. 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 Oh no no no. Oh no no. Oh Davidson's returned. Oh. Poor oh, Davidson. Davidson has not had a good day today. Pretty sure that's friendly cannons tearing into my own men. All I needed was one brigade. Yeah, Davison surrendered. <laughs> Oh, Davidson, your short military career did not do you very well. One thousand five hundred men. Davidson, probably the the worst commander I've yet seen in this game, or the worst actions I've seen. From a command in this game for quite a while. Yeah, people were drawing. I think the battle's been won. There's going to be another minor victory, but uh, the point has been made. Now we're going to draw the field. In all fairness, I think the Union campaign is an easier campaign. The only difficulty is you start off with some manpower struggle. Just a little bit, not a lot, due to um, draft laws, which become a problem in 1862 and 1863. But otherwise, you've got the industry, you've got the manpower. Um, the only difficulty is, is the length of the war and having to manoeuvre south, whereas the Confederacy can be very, defen be very, very, be very defensive. So Union is the easy, easy of the two playthroughs. See, I with the new changes in the um, in the state loyalty and national support, I think I don't particularly like it that much because the it, before it had a very asymmetrical campaign to it. For the Union, you had to invade the South, you had to do the objectives, you had to get West Virginia. You had to um, split the Confederacy in two. You had to take Richmond. Whereas the Confederacy, all you had to do was defend in your playthrough. You just had to stop the Union in advance. And then if you did take Washington, you, you, did, you almost effectively won the game because of the sheer damage you did to Union morale. Um, or if you did take enough Union territory, not, not, not just Washington, but enough territory. So it was very asymmetrical, whereas the Union was about keeping up with your national support but while also invading the South, the Confederacy was just, was object, um, strategy was dust to survive long enough for the Union to cave in. With this new 
national support mechanic where it's all about take, taking territories and defeats and things like that. I feel that now you've sort of lost that asymmetry. Like, you don't have to advance as much as the Union. I mean, you still do advance a little bit, but uh, it may also be because of the raiding. The raiding was also... Yeah, I don't think I can use this campaign as a good indicator of uh, of what the what the new Union campaign feels like with the new uh, new patches because of the broken future of raiding, um, which probably has us completely tilted the game in our favour. But... Um, using if i was to use this campaign which i probably shouldn't i would say i've actually missed the old sort of national support feature where um you did feel like there was almost a different way of playing as a union as opposed to confederacy whereas this i've i haven't had to advance as much down south sure i've advanced into tennessee but i haven't had to like split the confederacy in two i haven't i haven't touched vicksburg i haven't taken um i haven't taken atlanta yet and they're already on 30% war support, whereas before, if you bumped up the Confederacy war support a little bit, they were just last and last, and you were fighting to 1863 despite, or at least 1863, 1864, just from uh, constant invasions of the South. However, I personally, I, I personally find the Confederate campaign more enjoyable because it's all, all you really have to do is fight the battles, and sometimes you, you, the odds are normally not in your favour. Uh, no, finished the battle. Fin the battle's finished. The uh, AOs were drawn. I did a few, a few piecemeal attacks. I was just um, saying, Hoffman, that I don't really like the new national support mechanic. Uh, at least from this playthrough, it might be a bit wonky because of the OP uh, cavalry raids, but um, cavalry raiding mechanic. But I feel like the asymmetrical strategy or objectives um, from the old policies, uh, from the old patches, were better. Whereas before, as a union, you had to sort of move down south and take objectives and tick the boxes on the campaign tree to get the south to surrender. Now it feels like you're just playing the same sort of objectives as the uh, as the uh, as the union uh, as the confederacy, which is just win battles. So as you can see, fifteen thousand casualties to my two thousand. It was a pretty decisive victory once again. But that's like, and again, that's my opinion, and it is based off a wonky campaign. I probably should go around and replay this with the uh, with the no raiding, but uh, I knew raiding was powerful. I didn't think it was that powerful. I thought it was like in previous patches, it did damage um, national support, but I didn't do as much damage to armies like it did on this on this playthrough. This playthrough, it's just deleting armies. Yeah, the um, Cav owned the army is not only OP in battle, but OP off the battle because of the raiding mechanic. Like, with the raiding right now, you have uh, you have orders as a normal army just to click raid. Now, if you click raid, it will damage the enemy territory and also skirmish with nearby armies. However, it stacks. So if you put enough cavalry into one army, then it stacks the skirmishing damage and it stacks the raiding damage. And so what you end up with is you press the button and entire armies just disappear from the skirmishing. Like I was seeing 2,600 Confederate troops getting skirmished to death per tick. Which is too, uh, too strong. So it looks like there has been a surviving corps, siblings corps, of uh, 17,000 men with 51,000 casualties. So uh, we'll see how well that turns out. So I'll move down the army of Indiana to support that. Of their mixed mus musket garbage.
on the left. Yeah. I'm going to have to move this guy back now south. There you go, Emancipation of the Slaves, that should... I think there should just be a hard limit on... Um... A hard limit on um, how many cavalry you can have unless you unlock it by policies. We get a lot of sieges going on. Yeah, Missouri. I hate Missouri. <laughs> I'm sorry if you live in Missouri, boys, but Missouri is not a pleasant place to campaign in. I'm, I'll be, I'll be brutally honest here. Yeah, I'm thinking horses should be a limited resource, which you unlock via policies, and it would reflect well in the uh, in the historical aspect, being that, of course, historically, the uh, Union didn't have particularly good horses till they uh, or later on in the war. Because they had to buy a load of uh, buy a load of horses, and a lot of profiteers decided to uh, scam them with nags. A bit like manpower. I think it should be a bit like manpower. What is going on here? Horse is filled with drawing. I really hate campaigning in, in Missouri. This is why I always try and take it as soon as possible, because it is a disgusting area to campaign in. Loads of forts being besieged. I think it's a st they're re this 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 they're sieging and not sieging over and over. That's only one soldier. Oh, another battle at uh at Richmond, we have 44,000 men versus my 50,000. Again, they sh I think they should have a lot more men in that battle. So, uh, I think I'm just, what, what do you call it? I'm confusing the AI with having two separate armies nearby. And so they keep on splitting their forces. All right, where's the objectives? Lost, lost, lost. Apparently they have all the objectives, even though I'm defensive. Okie dokie. Single line. Long range. Move in. Yes, but here's the problem, uh, Hoffman. Um, they... Although they did the intelligent thing about attacking one army at a time, because I split the army, their little their cores are too spread out. And so if they had all their cores together, they might have 60,000 men or 70,000 men, but they only got 40,000 men in this battle because their cores are too split out. It's an ongoing issue. Um, I think they, they have improved on it a little bit, but I think what I've done is because I've added the... Uh, I've added the army on, on the left... Um, that it's confused the AI a little bit. So they're splitting up a bit more. And that's what I find really sad. You can see you can you can see that the AI has built a solid army, which 
if they could only get all of it into battle, it could have an impact, but they can't. So many times they can't. I might even play it, do a playthrough I don't build any forts, because uh, I think the forts also screw things up the AI as well. You've got to sort of build forts as a union, but as a confederacy you don't really have to. It's in your interest to do so, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. We're just going to punch through this. I have a sneaking suspicion I can just punch through this. Who cares about manoeuvring when you can just charge head on? Maneuvering for sissies. Imagine unironically attempting to maneuver. I mean, I aim to be as uh, unstrategic and uh, awful as possible to see if the AI can uh, beat me. In this battle. Mm, that's a nice defensive line. It's a pity that you just split it. Oh cool, the streams go to war. That's cool. I didn't know it was uh, still possible. I thought it must be very difficult to stream. Because of the age of the uh, product. Charge this cannon. They do live one or two times a week. Oh, that's cool. I'll, uh, I'll subscribe to that bad boy. Is that line going to crumple, is it? Is it crumpling or is it reforming? Okay, maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought, yeah, at first I thought the AI line was crumpling, but it was just collapsing in itself as soon as it spotted me. Now, they don't look too bad. It's 
very condensed, but it's at least got some form of a... Uh, firing line set up. Yeah, not bad. Alright, oh, seems like I misjudged the AI. Ah, very concentrated, condensed battle line. Quite good. Quite good indeed. Sadly, I think it's a bit too little too late for you though. Now I found this rather interesting YouTube video, um, there's this meme going on where there's a song called Little Dark Age on and, it, and what these guys have done is they've like got pictures of like famous nations or pictures of uh, famous civilizations and as this music plays um, they, they flip through the history of this nation, yeah yeah my little dark age yeah, they flip through the history of this nation with, um, with the pictures. I was watching the the, front, the French one, and of course it's got Charlemagne in it. It's got uh, Napoleon. It's got uh, Louis the Sun King. It's got everything up to it. And I thought this is really cool. I think really the French do get a, a bad rap, like in terms of what they've actually their influence in European history. I think the French have done quite a lot, and have uh, been underrated, especially by by the Anglo's. The Anglos are a rather cruel when it comes to French history. Yeah, all we ever care about was Waterloo and uh, and the Second World War, which I think is rather unfair. You know, the French have had such, have such like rich history when it comes to like, military engagements and uh, actual impact on the world. Like Louis the Sun King, he just spent like, most of his reign just going through the, like the Low Countries. Just, Pillaging it and, uh, and reading it. We destroy it more than one time. Yes, uh, the Germans sadly uh, do not do uh, have a tendency have, in terms of historical uh, impact of destroying Europe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I'm trying to think of like a good period in history. Where, uh, the, where Germany didn't destroy Europe. Let's see, let me think. So, of course, we've got Roman times collapse of, collapse of Rome. You now it's mostly the Germans. Um, then you've got... Suppose you could blag it and say you were part of Charlemagne's kingdom. So technically you were, you were doing pretty well. <laughs> and then you go to the Holy Roman Empire. What does the Holy Roman Empire do? Go to war with France most of the time. Um, get beaten up by Poland a few times, go to war with each other a few times. Um, maybe the Third Crusade, I suppose, Holy Roman, is it the Third Crusade? With the Holy Roman Emperor Barbarossa? Maybe the Northern Crusades? I guess. Uh, then you, I think it's what, the Siege of Constantinople, so uh, that didn't work out too well. <laughs> Again, not uh and then you've got what? The Polonic Wars not really a big deal. And then the not eighteen hundreds where Germany and the yeah, it's not a good I mean, I suppose you could say Austria. Austria was technically part of Germany or 
part of the Holy Roman Empire, so and Austria had quite a big impact. So actually, you know, you can be can blag it that Holy Roman Empire Austria, yeah, not that bad. But uh, actually, historically, you got you guys uh, do not come out in credit. So again, another pretty easy battle, but because at this stage I've reached critical mass as a union. I reached OP stage as the Union. During the Napoleonic Wars, a fight we'd done with them traumatised them for a long time. What traumatised the French? Or traumatised Europe? Ah, oh, right, the Germans. Yeah, the Germans were a bit, uh, a bit upset with uh, the whole Napoleonic Wars thing. <laughs> they really were just like bullied by Napoleon for like, <laughs> for like fifteen years. Another easy victory in Richmond. They call it a narrow victory. I beg to differ. One of my forts have collapsed. 32,000 men. 96,000 men. 32,000 men. Where's this third corps? It might be time to upgrade the first corps. Who do you belong to? Of the Army of Kentucky. Because I have a sneaking suspicion that we're about to have a big old war in Missouri. But I've got no muskets, so hey -oh. The eagle for that army, where do you think it comes from? I heard you. I'm a tad concerned here. I've got like 60,000 troops marching towards me. It may be time to relocate back to St. Louis. And recapture the forts along the way. Don't exchange units. Fort Seymour. Where's Fort Seymour? There it is. Thirty-four thousand men in that fort. Good luck. The eagle for that army. What do you? Uh, oh yeah. Watch out. What do you with that bad boy? So I'm thinking this is not good. That's only three thousand. Dick's core is a waste of time. I don't want to get involved with it. I'm fed up with all these little armies running around in my rear. Being a general nuisance. I think this has been broken. So normally once you route an army it will retreat back into its own territory. But now it's a sort of hovers round being a general nuisance.
don't really want to move forward anymore here. I'm going to call an immediate withdrawal. And I'm going to form up the two armies at Louisville. Oh, they're spreading out awfully. Not a fan. I'm gonna have to make another army over here just to contain this mess. Actually, I'm gonna make another core for the Army of Kentucky. Oh no, that's a lot of cannons I don't want. Just bought five cannons I don't want. There we are. That's an army of 68,000 men. So many armies everywhere. And for the army of Indiana, you're going to cause well. Just to contain the mass of troops. And I keep on floating around my borders. I have no idea how they're getting supplied, but uh, hey-ho. Bruh. Looks like we found the, uh, found the Confederates. Fifty six thousand men. If I win this, I'm going to start move immediately south. I have so many rogue armies I've got to deal with.
So what have we got strategic wise? Lost, occupied, lost, 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 occupied. 81 days before. <laughs> yeah. Is it what? Is it 81 days? Let me check. Is it literally 81 days before they actually the boys show up? Oh, 80, arriving in 25 hours. Okay, it's not that bad. Not that bad. I've got to be aggressive here. I've got to take some objectives before the enemy can reinforce. Oh, it's 90,000 men. My cannons are immediately moving up. Ah, oh, hello Rocky Top, I know you. I've seen you before. Have these guys got any good equipment? Of course not, my cavalry arm is togged at all. I feel like forts are perhaps no longer as effective as they once were. This tend to get rolled over rather quickly. I may stop building forts. And just chase armies instead. Hello. Oh no. Oh no. Cross immediately move to engage. Actually, don't. I don't think that's a good idea. Where's my cannons? The cannons are going to move on top of Rocky Top Hill. And the second brigade is going to move over here. Oh boy! Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Not good. They'd have been caught in somewhat of a pincer. Immediately run away, Cav. You've done your job because you're useless unless you're charging. I think they can cross the stream as well, so they can pretty much pop up anywhere they want. A nice little charge from Adam's Brigade. Good for you.
What are you doing, Cav? Get back. You're gonna get butchered. What are you doing, Step Cav? Um, suppose we'll just try and aim to hold Rocky Top. To keep on charging on the left, Hayes Brigade and Dixon's Brigade. I think we'll be fine. I think we've got the better equipment. It's one of the few armies that actually comes well equipped. Got all this mixed musket scum. to get rid of that artillery. And they've already moved the counter. Stop, 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 oh god. Olmstead's counter charge. Time to move the cow up to the left flank. Oh, I had some reserves. It's not. Come on, long street. Get that long street artillery. You've done so well so far, Drury. How long does it take to get artillery in a position? I can't afford to let that artillery hit me. You've got to, you've got to turn to fight this. Oh, Drury, you machine! Street up the hill. Keep going, Drury.
I need you to charge over here, boys. Form up and move in. Gotta go, that's got to go. Uh, charge forward if you can. I know I'm moving into the flank, but I've got to give it out to Louis Peace. There we are, that's the first artillery piece down. Oh, that's bring from muskets to my arch nemesis. Stop refusing my orders, gentlemen. Uh, the flank has been turned, it's time to withdraw. Where are they coming from? These guys got life and musket, that's good. But George Dick here needs to uh, needs this cleared before that artillery can just too much damage. The order was given, gentlemen. Why have you why do you refuse to retreat? I've got my eye on you, Coldwell. Good, move forward, engage. Alright, that line has been reformed. Please, go there. It was a little bit buggy on this map. Uh, retreat. 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 Cavalry, you almost in position. You get in there. God damn it, men. I swear to God. 
you refuse this order, I'm going to see about replacing you all. Is that most of your objectives in my control? Occupied, occupied, occupied. Three taken. Three lost. Interesting. Even Stevens. Home that battle line. It's not hard, gentlemen. All right. We've got a good defensive position on Rocky Top, but we've still got to push forward. In terms of casualties and inflicted, we're pretty even on manpower right now. I think we've still got to wait until the Confederate brings more troops up. Army of the West. It's Army of the West. Give me Confederacy, please. No, uh, if I click Union, no, if I click down here, still Union. All right, orders are bugged. So I won't know until the re uh, when the enemy reinforcements arrive. I don't move forward because of the uh, awful command and control. I don't want them to cross. I'm gonna send the cavalry over here because I have a sneaking suspicion or something doesn't doesn't sound right. I think at ten speed the orders get bugged a little bit. Like if it flashes, it doesn't. I don't think they move. I'm gonna to have to go forward to engage this. Uh, I can't afford to. Order them to lay down. Uh, ca cavalry, can we get a charge on this cannon? Oh, they can just abandon the cannon, I suppose.
All right, strategic situation. I've got an oh, enemy maneuvering on my west. And I've got an uh, enemy maneuvering on my east. If I redirect the cavalry over here. And redirect the infantry here. All right, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking if we do a high risk move with the intention of breaking the enemy's right while buying time on the left. It should hopefully even the playing field. Our cannons are still in good effect. We've got over, like complete cavalry like air control, well, not air control, but art artillery control. So I think we should move in to crush this force here and then flank around well, by time, and by the time we've won here, we should be able to relocate the rest of our army. Meanwhile, we'll dig some parapets. Oh, you're facing the wrong way, bro. Still facing the wrong way. Need you to face this way, bro. There we are. Almost. Good enough. Good enough. Good enough. Good enough. Fingers crossed this works, boys and girls, otherwise uh, we're in a bad spot. Order for a general advance on the right. Cavalry charge on the, on the uh, north. Cancel the order. What are you doing? Oh, let's slow it down, slow it down. Have we charge? Thanks, I've got some very elite cavalry. Out your order. Out to your order. Who's the core commander? Coldwell. Well, Coldwell has a, sh a, a massive artillery bombardment by time. The cavalry isn't ready yet to do another charge. The uh, enemy's formation is still too strong.
this is a pretty good battle. Because I'm con I'm it's a tense battle because I'm conscious of the uh, enemy's potential to get extra reinforcements from that next core. So I want to win this battle before the next core comes, or before the uh, AI can organize an attack. Sacrifices have to be made. Move Osborne in to get rid of that artillery. immediately retreat that can uh covering. He's done his job. Oh this has to go. I don't have to go. No movement over here, which is good. Turn the face this way. Engage. Um, hello, why is this reformed? Why have the Confederate forces reformed on my position? On my battery? Okay, the three star veteran units will do all this. Uh, he says, this sort of stop shot. Get him. Why do you persist on firing at short range?
Good, you, you do lots of damage. You send cavalry packing. <laughs> you send, what's his face? Bobby's Brigade. Yes, you do, because now you are a crack unit of cavalry. Another route. Another about another slaughter. Thankfully, hopefully the cannon battery is doing its uh, doing its thing. Fortunately, the Confederates chose not to attack, which is good. And uh, Cold Roll's brigade division has almost finished off that right flank. However, Hope has now arrived with his army, so now we're back to even <laughs> an even playing field in terms of manpower. I strongly suggest you face the right way, boys. Oh, the cab moving in. I had enough of these skirmishes. got almost in a position where our cavalry can be put to good use. You gotta uh, get a grip, guys. Just a really bad command and control. There's no discipline. No discipline in this Union Army.
Hang up charge. Good. We were able to uh, relieve Naylor from breaking like the coward, I mean, like the brave soldier he is. And we were able to get the Polignag's Brigade to surrender. Lots of uh, surrenders this, uh, this game. Oh, and Coburn's reformed. Great stuff. Thank you, Coburn. Another rout, another, another glorious victory for the right hand side. And Anderson has surrendered. So uh, it looks like I think the enemy is retreating now, which is great news for me. We were able to decisively win that by splitting the army in two and defeating it in detail. It was pretty hairy at the start, but fortunately, the uh, AI hadn't formed up or moved to attack yet, probably waiting for the reinforcing core. If it waited, then uh, we would have been in a bad spot, but there you go, 31,000 dead from, from or 31,000 casualties from 100,000, whereas my, I've only got 50,000 then. Another glorious victory. I like how they can face this lose 30,000 men and just shrugs it off. It's like, yeah. Um, it is only a scratch to my manpower. But then again, a lot of that's casualties, not actually dead. And that should allow us to move further south now. This is save the game. Let's delete the old saves first. And once I've secured back down south, I think I'll end it for the day. Or maybe not. I'm going to auto resolve that. Too many enemies, that's the problem. How big is this army? 41,000 men versus my 51,000. Let's upgrade the Department of the West to make sure they're getting the best equipment. Or oh, not, because I can't afford to upgrade them. I've got no equipment to upgrade them. That rogue core is winding me up. That's the first core. Second core. Follow these guys through Kentucky. I'll just move up here.
Oh, we won at Port Leigh. Great stuff. I really would like some more equipment. What core is this? First core of Yamu, Kentucky. Army of Indiana, Army of Kentucky. No, I've got nothing to upgrade them. This is this is a garbage fill of army. Telling me you can't use the uh, railway, old boy. There you go, rail movement. Probably should have used that a bit earlier. And that's a fault there. Damn, son. Alright, let's save the game. Let's do a treat so we can pause the game and get a grip of what's going on. So I'm going to end for the day, but um, as you can see, there's a lot of working parts going on right now. So the strategic situation on the right-hand side, uh, as you can see, we've moved back forward to take Lynchburg, but the Confederacy is really amping the ante in terms of its, uh, in terms of its uh, counter-attacks. Manpower-wise, it's got a fair of 44,000 men, which isn't that bad, and it's got 40,000 of Hamilton's division, 20,000, 50, 40, 50, 60, 60,000 men just watching Richmond with my uh, army of 65,000, and on the left it has got an army of 70,000 men moving in to counter the Department of Pennsylvania. We're moving into winter quarters now because of the... Uh, the, basically the tiredness of my forces, but um, it has been proving very difficult to uh, hold the line, so to speak, right now, and very difficult to actually wear the Confederacy out. It's taking a rather long time to, uh, to weed them down. So really, this will be just defensive actions until we've got while well, we can focus on the Central Theatre. Meanwhile, in the centre, we've been playing again sort of whack-a-mole bush wars. Playing whack-a-mole bush wars with um, with with, Kent with Kentucky and Tennessee. Uh, as you can see, there's like a rogue army just manoeuvring around behind me. Uh, where is it? Over here, Dick's Corps with only 3,600 men. Before the AI would just retreat, but as it stands, I think with the latest patch, the army just these armies just go where they please, and so it sort of forced me to build these second corps. To move around to deal with these minor nuisances which is a big problem um we've considered we've had to reinforce and build larger armies just to hold our, our actual lines of communication which is a problem for me because you see all of this it's just been taken by only three thousand men it's really quite a nuisance i had to hope these guys would starve but apparently not so right now we've got a, building a large army of Indiana to sort of garrison these states uh, and we're building large corps just to, just to form garrison hordes to walk to, to retake land taken by these lone wolf core enemy corps. Can you try to make a small cav army and uh, take it behind Lynchburg? Uh, I could but the micro is still pretty strong on the left. I'm trying to keep it too much. I'm really just playing defensive here. So I can focus on microphone the left, uh, the central and western field because there's far too much going on. I don't want to be like doing micro micro maneuvering of a small cavalry army on the east when I've got these massive engagements on the west and these large engagements in the centre. Um, in terms of Chattanooga, the Department of Ohio continues to uh, do its thing and is on track to advance down to Atlanta. Uh, where it will continue to raid the surrounding territories. 
Whereas uh, I don't really care too much about the supply lines here for this army, it's just a raiding army. Whereas this army, these, these armies which are really under-equipped, uh, really badly equipped forces, are just trying to hold what we've taken from the constant undermining of the enemy, of the confederate, uh, small, very weak, but almost like, almost like guerrillas that's moving around behind us. On the western theatre, we've had several battles and it's very contested right now. They have counter-attacked with a very large force of about 90,000 Confederate troops. We've won that battle and we've relieved the siege of Louisville, but as it stands we're still awaiting a decisive battle on the west to sort of push these guys back and then it'll be retaking the ground we've lost and slowly grinding forward. I think I'm not going to try an overly campaign in the west. Um, simply because just the nature of the battlefield is just really a dragging my um dragging it out. I can't really advance south, and it, really the battle is being dragged out here. So once I've pushed out what pushed these guys out and secured most of Missouri, I'm gonna have a few cores to set up around Missouri, and then hopefully I'm gonna hold here and focus once again on the east and the center. Uh, Policy-wise, we are going down diplomacy to get some more sweet, sweet guns. And economics, we are 394 pennies in debt. is not good. It may be time to buy some war bonds after this. What will this give me? Supply efficiency of 15%. I may also go for Confiscation Act, but... As you can see, our currency rating is not very high right now. We are paying an awful lot of money to maintain our forces, and it is very tricky right now. Not 400 million, six little m. Yeah, <laughs> um, something along those lines. See, they are very close to capitulating, very close. They're 33% on our war score, but the Confederacy just will not give up. And I think we're going to go for another year, maybe for 1863, maybe early 1864, before we can knock these guys out from this military engagement. Fortunately, our national morale is still pretty high, and our national support is, isn't that bad. But um, what we have in our favour is we've got high morale in our armies, uh, and we have a good level of military experience. However, as you can see, the casualties are very one-sided. So what do I think about the AI right now? Um, it's not really fair to judge it on this battle, on this campaign, because of the uh, the cheese in uh, with, uh, with McClellan's cavalry horde. But from what I find is I don't like how the currently the, uh, the, the AI can ignore its own supply lines and just maneuver around at will. I preferred it previously where the Confederate AI would once it lost a battle, it would withdraw back into its territory so it could regrow and recoup. But I think something's gone wrong here where these cores are no longer withdrawing back into their own territory. They're sort of wandering around, um, either because they can't withdraw or because they've got a long-winded route. And then they just sort of stay at about 3,000 men just going around being a nuisance. Um, and thankfully, I've got a fort here, otherwise I'd just end up starving. But these little armies are a complete nightmare. Um, to deal with, which is a bit of a nuisance. It has meant that, of course, you can see it from the historical realistic perspective of needing like 100,000 men just to hold the supply lines as the Union invaded. But from a gameplay perspective, it's a bit tedious because I was building these large cores to go around playing whack-a-mole these tiny armies, which is probably my own fault, if I'm honest. Um, but on the West, I do. it's been interesting to have these large-scale battles in the West. Uh, unique, a bit different, not too, not too shabby. So altogether, I would give this um, a pretty average game. There has been some improvements, but I can't really judge it fairly on this. I will play the Confederate campaign, which I believe is a bit more tighter after this, probably on the weekend or once this campaign is done. But um, as it stands, I think some of the some of the battle AI, the battle AI has been improved, especially on the defensive, but. Um, Campaign-wise, again, again, I'll, I'm always aiming for that perfect AI, so I'm being a bit critical here. But campaign-wise, it's still um, campaign-wise, and sometimes in the battle, it's still a bit iffy. Still, a few good battles, a few entertaining battles. I did like the Rocky Top battle, 
Um, that could have proved a problem if I was passive on that, but I wasn't. And I quite like the... Uh, mm, quite like the battles in Richmond as well. But uh, altogether, a good campaign. Uh, I've already saved, I don't want to save again. So gentlemen, I will bid you adieu. And we will continue on the campaign probably tomorrow. So gentlemen, well adieu.